Hello everybody, welcome to Coco's Crochet. I'm Litsa and today is all about our Cal 2024. We're going to talk about all the projects that were made in project number three and today we're going to choose project number four out of our little basket over there. Now, we're already a quarter of the way done. Isn't that amazing, guys? Because we have 12 projects to complete. Now, today is Saturday, the 24th of February, 2024. And I just want to talk to you about um, how this cow, you know, was created. What made me think of putting this together? And all of you have jumped on with so much joy and delight. And it just makes me so happy because it's morphed um, from just being my idea to something even better. So let me share that with you. <clears throat> Excuse the little frog in my throat. It is very, very early here this morning. I couldn't wait to have my coffee, have my shower and get on to talk to you so we can get started on our next project. So basically, last Christmas, I got caught out. Now, I have a box of goodies, and I'll bring it out for you in a moment because it's stacked with things on top of it. And in there, I keep things for like, you know, last minute gifting for birthdays or for Christmas gifts. Um, and last Christmas, I really got caught out because I really didn't fill that box through the year. So I thought, what a wonderful way to start off this year by filling our boxes or bags or baskets or drawers or wherever we keep um, things for, you know, last minute gifting or where we actually have planned what we want to, you know, crochet for gifts. And also a lot of us um, like to do markets and fairs. And this is a great way of, you know, putting together some inventory. But what's wonderful since then, and this is where it's morphed into something even better, is so many of you have jumped on and have said, you know what, we're going to take this opportunity to try different patterns, even if it's just one pattern for each project. And you know what, that's what I've been doing. I've been inspired by all of you, not to just create, you know, something that I've always made so that I can get, you know, bulk. Um, so for example, you know, 20 of the same thing for each project, but I've taken the opportunity to do a little bit of both. A little bit of um you know like creating something that i know i need in bulk and also trying something new so it's been very very exciting and once again it's because all of you have made me you know get into this um you know this feeling of yes it's an opportunity to do that so thank you each and every one of you who started that and now it just seems to be a thing which is awesome so basically these are you know this is how this cowl works not rules but this is how it works so each fortnight so this week will be project number four. So for two weeks, you'll have the opportunity. So whatever we choose to make as many of that project as you wish. Now, the reason why I say make as many as you wish, um, some of you might want to enter the competition at the end, which is basically um, we're going to be giving out five prizes. So five Amazon vouchers for sec first, second and three third prizes. So the person who's made the most will get obviously prize number one. So at the end of this cow, so at the beginning of July, I think the 1st of July, I'll ask you to all send me a photo or at least um, a tally of all your makes. So not individually, that comes, you know, through the, week, um, the weeks, but in, uh, all your makes. So let's say you've made 100 pieces all together and then I'll do a little tally board and then we'll choose the winners after a couple of days reason why I've done that is just a little incentive and a little bit of fun along the way and why not reward ourselves for all our hard and fun work as well. Now the other thing that you need to be mindful of is that you have a wild card. Now what does that mean? A wild card can be used or not used, it's totally up to you but you can use it if let's say for example and I always use the same example I think if I choose coasters so let's say we you know today we draw coasters and you're like i don't need coasters or i've got so many made already you can choose your wild card to either make a previous project or hold on to it and make something in the future in this cow so that's what the wild card is like i said you can use it or you don't have to use it but use it wisely because it is there for you so Without any further ado, I think I've explained everything about it. I know that most of you have jumped on from the very beginning, but if you haven't and you just want to join us now, please do so. Because at the very least, you're going to have a lot of fun. You get to showcase your work by sending it to me via email, um, and then I'll put it on either this um, you know, video or on my podcast um, on Thursdays. Now today we've got so many to share which is so wonderful but before we get started showing yours because I get so excited I am going to show you what I worked on. So I did a little bit of a mix this week so 
this um, project, project number three, was beanies or hats, you know, berets, whatever you want, bucket hats, whatever you wanted to send through. The majority of us have been making um, beanies, um, which is my favourite thing to make. So what did I do? I made a mixture of both. I'll start off with my mainstream donations. I call them mainstream because I use the same pattern every time, pretty much when I wanna just make something very quickly, which is a top down hat. And I do, you know, the increases for five rounds, then crochet some double crochet. This is all US terminology. And then do a rib with a back post, front post, and then I make the little beanies pardon the tails i haven't sewn them in yet but i did manage to make let me grab these so these are all made with middle ends and seven millimeter hook and i absolutely love this yarn it's that chain spun yarn and i did make one two three four so four more which are going into my donation um, box for k and k crochets bumblebee mountain outreach um, drive of beanies so i'm hoping to get them to them very very soon so now i'm at 12 beanies i'm trying to get 20 together before i send them through so i managed to make four more of these so that was great but then i thought hey it's time to experiment and boy, did I jump in very, very deep. A couple of podcasts ago, I did show you that I started working on a cable um, beanie and it is, it's finished. Okay, so this is a child's or a toddler one and I will show you up close. Now, my cables really do need some work on them. Um, but I have to say that it was... Um, interesting and I did enjoy this project in that I did try something new it took me forever to make but that's not because of the designer and I'll tell you all about that in a moment it's actually the creator so I definitely definitely need more practice but I love this yarn and it did turn out so soft and squishy I imagine on someone's little head now this is something that I don't know if you guys have seen before if you haven't made a beanie with cables and I, I don't know if it's like this if you make a blanket or a jumper or a sweater but look what the inside looks like it's very very like um uh, textured so it would really really keep you warm so this beanie was a pattern by mj mj's off the hook designs and it's called the crochet cable hat pattern and she's got it um you can make it from ba like baby all the way to adult size and it is a wonderful tutorial she, uh mj does say that it is an intermediate pattern so you know i should have known that from the start that I, it was a little bit um beyond me but i'm so glad i tried it and i did use my favorite spot saver yarn in tweed absolutely love this i've made uh just normal like mainstream beanies um using this yarn for my whole family i absolutely love it it's so beautiful and squishy and i went up uh i think two hook sizes i actually used a seven millimeter hook for this to make sure i could see the stitches i didn't want them to be tight so there you go guys this was my um challenge one this was something that i've never tried before so i'm so glad that i did it so that's my cable um beanie i'm not going to undo it i was going to rip it out but i thought you know what maybe in the future if i make another one because right now i i'm not ready to do that because they do take a lot of time um, for me um, so I'm going to keep it so just in case in the future I make a jumper or another beanie or something I want to see if I've improved <laughs> hopefully I would have but anyway that's why I'm not going to frog it out so that's that one and then this is I absolutely love this beanie so before I, oh, let me show you the beanie okay so here's the beanie here look at all those wonderful stitches my fingers are poking out starts off the traditional way you know like just increasing but look at all these great stitches now for this again i use my spot saver yarn but in silver they don't call it gray they call it silver and i used a six millimeter hook but this is another um beanie that i wanted to try because i kept seeing them popping up and i thought one day i'm going to do this so this beanie is by the wonderful um juan at uh, the yarn addict now i'm pretty sure most of you know who he is but he is such an amazing human i've been watching a lot of his videos and his lives where his mum is on there and um she is absolutely gorgeous and i always think my mum and his mum will be such good friends you know in an alternate universe where we actually live close by 
But in saying that, I have to say, if you haven't already visited, please go and do so. He's got a wonderful series called Spin the Wheel series where he spins a wheel and um, I don't want to wreck it, so please go and watch it. So basically he has a wheel and he spins it and depending on where it lands, it dictates how many stitches you make and how many rows of each. And the wonderful thing is um, that I actually got to learn a new stitch making this as well. So I just love the concept of it. And then there's so many other beanies in there that I'd like to try. But this one's called the Joyride Beanie. And there is a stitch in here that I had never made before. Let me see if I can point it out to you. It's called the um, Linked Half Double Crochet. And it is absolutely gorgeous. The way that it comes up it's that one there it's not a very tall stitch but it's very very pretty creates a beautiful texture with all the other stitches that we can't combine in here we did this one also has v stitches um single crochet in the back loop um front posts you need to go and watch the video because i have to say that one has one of the most soothing voices you just want to listen to him speak and also he makes you truly believe that you can get it done and it, it is um, a very very well put together video like um, it's almost like the perfect tutorial so I'm so glad that I tried that one and eventually I would like to make each and every beanie in there because it's just such a wonderful concept and it was a lot of fun making it so that's that one and then the last beanie that I made, actually, I made it last night while we went out to dinner because I was talking to one of my girlfriends at work and her little niece, who happens to be a student at our school as well, she recently had brain cancer operation. She's doing so well, but her treatment's going to start and her little hair's going to fall out. So we decided that I'd make her a pink beanie in her favourite colour. And it's just, again, you know, um, increasing five times and then I've put some puff stitches in there and double crochets and this is in the spot saver again I just love this yarn we all know that in the color pink and I think I used I did use a five and a half millimeter hook to you know for her little head so I hope that you know this keeps her little head warm while she's going through that little period and then at the end of it she can have it just to wear when all her little hair grows back so that was that one as well so i managed to make one two three four five six seven beanies for um, project number three before we get to project number four i need to showcase all your beanies you've all been very very busy and i'm so very very excited to show you these now let me show you this one lisa sent this to me pretty much within 24 hours of um, project number three being chosen I absolutely love the colours in this one, Lisa, and the pom-pom on the end. And the great thing is, this is the first beanie that is a crocheted beanie for Lisa. So let me tell you what she writes in her little email to us. Um, she was so excited about project number three that she started and finished the same day. And it's her first crochet beanie. Um, it's the GG beanie. It's a free pattern from Ravelry. I'll bring it up nice and close for you. She finally got to use one of her single skeins that she has had for a while and there was only two grams left. And she says, yay. Talk about yarn chicken. That is so awesome. Um, the yarn is Chroma Twist Worsted from Knit Picks and the colour is Lupine. Um, uh, Lisa did use a five millimetre crochet hook and she's very happy with the result. And so you should be absolutely gorgeous. Let me pop these down over here. And then Vicky sends us, now let me get them one by one so I don't get them wrong. Oh, that's the way up. So Vicky, thank you for sending in your um, beanies. So this is her pink one and it's a kitty cat um, hat. And then her grey one, I love this one too. This one is a moss stitch absolutely love it and this one is a sample um stitch that vicky made up the different stitches can you all see them there absolutely gorgeous and last but not least i have not tried this stitch yet in anything and it's the waffle stitch one day i certainly will be making it such a beautiful beanie so thank you vicky for sending in your entries for project number three i'll just pop them over here now KK from K and K Crochet. Now, KK is the mama. We always like to say that. Now, she sent in her entries, and you can see these on her video, hers and Kristen's. I'll show you Kristen's in a moment, um, where she's talking about um, her uh, uh, bean, their beanies for our cow. 
there they are there and let me talk to you about them so the one that's got the black so this one here the black red and gray is a pattern by spring the fiber enthusiast and the tutorial is on her channel and it's called the barky pa now i really want to try um some of um spring's um beanies and i'll show you the ones that kristen made too they sound super super awesome and the turquoise and orange beanie is a pattern by repeat crafter me and it's the one that's called the school colors pattern but um kk just used her own scraps of yarn which is awesome so thank you for sending them through to us and these are kristen's now there's something very exciting about kristen's entries Kristen is now an adult. She turned 18, so she can join in all the crochet alongs on YouTube. Now, Kristen is very excited about that, and so are we. Now, Kristen is from K and K Crochet, and she's the daughter. And now she says her black hat, so the black and the red over there. Again, it's by Spring the Fiber Enthusiast, the Barky Pa pattern, and it's a red heart yarn. And the other hat, I absolutely love the other hat. It's again from Spring, the Fiber Enthusiast. It's the Messy Bun Divine Hat. And it's a Red Heart Retro Stripes. I'm pretty sure I've got that color way as well. Now at the top here is where you put the elastics. And apparently um, Spring has a very special way of doing that. So again, another video I must go and watch. Uh, you know, all these um, patterns that we're adding to our crochet to-do list. It's so awesome. So thank you so much, KK and Kristen, for sending in your entries. I really do appreciate it. Now, Kim has sent us a selection of her hats. And remember, Kim is our by stitch all friend. So some of these hats are knitted. So there are four knitted and two crocheted hats. The two ladies' hats, the red and the peachy ones, so these two here, um, they look like they're knitted, don't they? Let's have a little look what she says. So they're made with toft 100% wool um, from her stash. And then the two knitted and the two crocheted hats on top. So these are the knitted ones, guys. I made a mistake. These are the knitted and these are the crocheted children's hats. Um, they're from the Women's, Inst Women's Institute Soft and Cuddly Variegated Yarn. I've never heard of that brand. Sounds beautiful. Look at those colours. So thank you very, very much, Kim, for sending us your beautiful hats in. And then Deborah from Make It Do Farm. Look at these gorgeous creations. Aren't they beautiful? So the tan one is a yarn inspirations pattern. It's called To The Peak Hat. She used Red Heart Soft Yarn and the colour is Wheat and a 55 millimeter hook. And the other hat is again by Juan the Yarn Addict and it's called Ribbit. It's just a hat. And it's Red Heart Super Saver in the colour Mirage. Beautiful colours in that. And a six millimetre hook. That is awesome. Thank you so much, Deborah, for sending them through. Now, our friend Bella, our Bella's Crocheted Gifts, she sent us two hats. And you can watch her video where she talks all about these. She's put the hashtag Coco's Crochet Cal 2024 in there. And that's how you'll get to see a lot of uh, um, the other content makers that have joined in as well in our awesome cow. So they're her beautiful beanies for project number three. Now, Raylene has been super busy. So let me grab the little hats and I'll talk to you as I um, bring them up. Look at these gorgeous colors. Now, Raylene used all her middle ends for these um, beanies, which is so awesome. This one is called the Stormy Waters. I hope you can see all those stitches. So beautiful. This one is the Divine Hat. I'm yet to make one of those. I really, really need to add it to my list. I believe this is a V stitch, one of my favorite stitches. If I've got that one wrong, sorry, Raylene. This one is called the Dragon Beanie. I think that's the same colorway as um, Kristen's hat. And then this one is just one that Raylene made up with her own design and stitches. Absolutely gorgeous. So thank you, Raylene, for sending through your beanies. And then Alley Cat, she has been busy as well. So here we go here. I love all the colors. Um, now, Ali Cat says that she's been trying some different styles and sizes. She will be donating to several groups. So they're going in her donations basket or bin or bag or box. <laughs> 
absolutely beautiful. And then we have Susan. Now, let me get her little collection of beanies up. Now, Susan said she here, she's sending us a photo of the eight beanies she had made to date and is hoping to make two more by today. I'm sure she will. So that'll bring her tally up to 10. So thank you for that, Susan. And then Josephine has sent us a collection of her beanies. Here they are here. I love all the different colours. So Josephine said that she's made eight adult beanies for her charity box and 14 preemie beanies for the hospital NICU. So obviously they're the little baby, baby ones. Very cute. Thank you, Josephine, for sending them through. Now, I have three more um, to show you on my iPad because they came in very late last night and I haven't had a chance to print them off yet, but that's okay. So these come to us from Thea. There, let's try to get, yes, without the lights in there. So Thea said that she sent, she has made 12 beanies. So she's made the Hermione Granger and she has labelled them for us. And that's from the Harry Potter book. Those of you that watched our podcast would have seen her Dobby. If you haven't, please go and have a look. Um, uh, she said that all the beanies are pretty much new patterns. Uh, the beanies marked one and two. So up the top there. She's made at least 40 or more in the past few years. The cat ear beanies and the Hermione beanie have already been claimed by her daughters. So she has nine left for her gift box. So thank you for sending them through to us, Thea. And then next we have, oh wow, look at all of these gorgeous colours. Absolutely love them. Colours and styles. That's what I love about this, that we all get an opportunity to, you know, put in our own flair and our own taste in this cow. So these come to us from Shayla and there are 10 beanies in total. She was hoping to make one a day, she did say, but she got caught up with other things as we do. But 10 is awesome, so yay. She's got one infant or toddler beanie. That's the one with the little white pom-pom. Oh, <laughs> nearly lost it, guys. And then she's made two child in the black and white, which are caddy beanies, and seven adult ones in various patterns. But the yellow beanie is a bag of day pattern called quilt, quick silver beanie. So thank you so much, Shayla, for sending those through. And lucky last, we have um, Sally's beanies. And here they are here. Oh, there we go, guys. Can you see those? There we go. Um, th three on the left are Aaron, and she held two strands together. And the pattern is by Heart Hook Home, and she said it's a very easy beanie. The one on the right holds two strands together, DK weight, and the pattern is Oops Crochet on YouTube. And hope her granddaughter gets another little turban in mint green. Now, Sally is also Nanny Moon Crochets on YouTube. So please make sure you go and hang out with her if you already, haven't already done so. So that's it, guys. That's everyone's beanies for project number three to date. If any of you have made some, like from now, um, you know, you finished them now and you want to show, like, show them to us, please send them to my email and I'll show them on my podcast because I want to make sure that everybody's beanies get showcased. Now, here we go, guys. Project number four. What's it going to be? So here they are all in here. I love this part, shaking them all about. Now, we have been guessing along the way what's going to come out. I'm going to see if anyone predicts it correctly, but whatever it's going to be, it's going to be fun, guys. So when we finish this project, we're going to be one third of the way done. So here we go. Drum roll. You know, I can't do a drum roll. I can hear some of you doing one. So let's take that off. Let's see, is it upside down? Water bottle holders. I absolutely love making water bottle holders. Now, I've only ever made one style. So this means that it might be an opportunity to try a completely different one. So here you go, guys. Water bottle holders. I will pop this up here now. The beanies will go down. That will come off so we know what we'll be making. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. This is so awesome. Water bottle holders, for me, are great for markets. So I'm thinking now I'll try to get bulk out more than anything else. But let me tell you, there's been many, many a time where I've just been reminded that we have a birthday coming up for someone, especially at work, and they get a water bottle holder. So it's actually something that I really enjoy mm -hmm. making and having in my box. So project number four. 
is going to go all the way to the 8th of March. So midnight Friday, midnight the 8th of March. And on the 9th of March, we're going to draw out project number five. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's get on to project number four. I wonder how many different creations we're going to see, how many different patterns that will be discovered out there. Because you know, there's a myriad of them on YouTube, you know, Pinterest, Ravelry, and wherever else you get your free and paid for patterns. I generally go for the free patterns, let me tell you, and there are so many available out there. So that's it, guys. We're done. Project number four water bottle holders get onto it i cannot wait to see what you all make i hope you're all keeping well enjoy your weekend wherever you may be here we're having a very overcast very very humid day oh, i can imagine what i look like but nevertheless it's going to be a lot of fun i'm going to jump on youtube now and see how many patterns i can find i cannot wait to share mine with you so until I see you all very, very soon, take care, everybody. Bye-bye for now.